If you walk the route where the Berlin Wall once stood, expecting to see a lot of places with remains of the wall installations, chances are you will get very disappointed. But if you know how and where to look, you can still find plenty of traces. In this video I will give you 10 tips and a bonus tip that will make you help your Berlin Wall tour much more interesting. This is the Berlin Wall, well at least what's left of it. After the fall of the wall in November 1998, Germany did its best to get rid of everything that remembered of the border between East and West Berlin. It is mainly thanks to private initiatives that there are some pieces of the wall left. But why did everything have to disappear? One of the main reasons is that people that lived 40 years in a dictatorship wanted to get rid of everything that would remember them of this period. In addition, the death strip went through the center of the city where buildable land is scarce. With the fall of the wall, a lot of land at premium locations became available for construction. Although the wall has been removed, for a big part you can still see where it was. In the city, its course is marked with a double row of cobblestones. In the more rural areas, however, it is a bit harder to find out its exact course. But there is another helpful guidance, the Berliner Mauerweg. These signs will guide you to hike or bike all the way around West Berlin, and in total that's 160 kilometers, 100 miles. But what should you look for when you'd like to see what is still left of the wall installations? Here are 10 tips and a little bonus at the end. Locations. Where to start? Don't start at the city center. The Brandenburg Gate, Potsdamer Platz, Checkpoint Charlie, they're all great to visit, but not if you want to look for some real artifacts of the wall. Eastside Gallery and the Bernauer Straße are better locations. A little more to the north in Pankow or to the south in Treptow, you can have very interesting observations. In general, I'd recommend to walk instead of cycling. You just see more when you are going at a lower speed. And it's easier to stop if you see something that draws your attention. Orientation. What is important is always to be aware where you are. Are you in the east or in the west? Almost all of the border installations were on the east side. The Berlin wall marking on the street means that in practice you only have to look in one direction. Now let's get into the real stuff. What should you look for? The patrol road. The former patrol road of the East German border soldiers does still exist for a big part. The patrol roads, in German Kolonnenweg, are mostly asphalt roads and in some areas they have been even renewed, being part of the Berliner Mauerweg. Walking the former patrol road is still possible for a big part. It is convenient because you know you can find traces as well on your left as on your right side. Traces of the wall. Chances to find some remaining wall parts are small, but there are some locations where the street reveals where the so-called third generation wall stood. In contrast to the fourth generation wall, which were separate concrete elements that only needed a flat underground, the third generation wall consisted of concrete slabs between H-shaped steel pillars. And these pillars have left marks on some streets, like here on the Leuchner Damm in Kreuzberg. The Hinterland Wall It is easier to find traces of the Hinterland Wall, the wall on the eastern side. This wall used to be painted in grey with white rectangles. Well-maintained pieces can be found at the Invalidenfriedhof in District Mitte. Here you can see how the border installations ruthlessly pass through graveyards. Fences the border did not only consist of the wall and the hinterland wall. In some parts, fences were installed instead. Also, fences were used as an extra measure in areas just before the hinterland border, where there was less oversight on the death strip, as a so-called Vorfeldsicherung, or forefield defense. A lot of fences still exist, still functioning as perimeter fence. Frequently you can find metal grid fence, or the concrete poles that used to hold the grid plates. Lights and electric installations. All kinds of lights were used to light the border area. At several locations you can still find a light strip next to the patrol road. 
Here at the Bürgerpark in Schönholz, you can see that the lights used to be placed in such a way that they would illuminate the control strip next to the patrol road to detect SKPs. Lighting was also used in areas with less oversight as a forefield defense, such as next to railroads, factories and houses. A lot of electricity was needed in the border area, mainly for the lighting but also for the signal fences. So it's no surprise that you can still find switching control cabinets along the former death strip, including wiring for the communication system of the border soldiers. Barred and walled up windows and doors. Every building in the border area was a thorn in the side of the East German authorities because it was an increased risk of escapes. A lot of buildings in or close to the death strip were simply torn down. There where buildings would still stay, radical measures were taken to avoid escapes. Next to additional lighting, doors and windows were blocked, either by bars or by simply walling them up. Also lattices were placed in canals crossing the border area. Existing brick walls, for example at graveyards or perimeter fences, were used as part of the wall installations. Openings were closed and barbed wire or glass was put on top. In the area close to the border, but also in the death strip, all buildings had white painted walls, so that potential SKPs would be clearly visible at all times. From time to time, you are able to recognize one of these walls. Vehicle blocking elements. Some forefield defenses that had to avoid escapes with heavy vehicles can still be found in East Berlin. Concrete flower pots had been put in the middle of the street in order to avoid that, for example, a truck could build up speed and hit the border fences or walls. This kind of escape had happened frequently in the 1960s. A unique kind of blockade could be found in Treptow, where trees were planted closely together to avoid that any vehicle could ram into the hinterland wall. Soldier border markings. These red, white, green, white markings on lamp posts can be found, amongst other places, in the Bernauer Straße and in Schönholz. The markings indicated the outermost boundary for the border soldiers. If they would enter the area going towards the west without permission, this was regarded as an attempt to escape, and that could end deadly. And there is more what you could look out for when exploring the area of the former wall installations. Red white colored border markings, remains of a border crossing area in the Spree River, remnants of bunkers, marks on trees. Keep in mind that circumstances change continuously and that the state of the remainders of the wall is deteriorating rapidly. Some of the pictures I showed are a bit older and situations may have completely changed. By the way, you might have noticed that I haven't mentioned the watchtowers. I will make a separate video about them soon. Good luck with finding traces and feel free to share your observations in the comments down below. Thanks for watching!